Welcome back to RX Muscle's Iron Road to the Olympia 2019, brought to you by Chemical Warfare. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest had a great year so far. He won in Toronto, he won in Puerto Rico, and he's uh, back to join us on the show, our good friend John De La Rosa. What's going on, guys? How are you? Got the Olympia coming up in less than three weeks. Uh, you got a wide open field. You got an opportunity of a lifetime to, to crack that top five, John. You got to be on top of the world. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, you know, I, I, again, I feel really uh, lucky to, to be in the position I'm in and, and going back to the Olympia. And I fully intend on taking advantage of the opportunity of being able to stop across the stage, but also display a physique that's worthy of being in that top five, top six, you know, that's, uh, that's the goal right now. Chris, Chris Aceto told me a great story about how you, um, uh, when you first started competing, I guess Bob Grushkin was helping you a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. Bob had called up Chris and told him, hey, you got to see this guy. He's, he's, he's going to be a, a great pro one day. And I think you were like 135 pounds or something like that. Like, like just a skinny little guy with arms and calves. Yeah. And, yeah. And he was right. I was about, I was about 165, 170 pounds yeah. at that time. Yeah. And, yeah. and but, you know, Chris saw the pictures and, you know, he's like, you know, you look good. You were in shape and everything like that. But he never thought, you know, in a million years that you would, that you would do that. But Bob saw it. You Grushkin knew that you were going to be a, a really great competitor. You know, you know, that, that's a really funny story. So I was doing uh, that, you know, I was competing in that natural circuit and doing the Napa Nationals and all this other stuff. And, uh, I remember Bob Gruskin. Now, me and my father, you know, we didn't know this guy from a hole in the wall. So right. we, uh, we, I just won my class uh, and the overall of that show. And this little old guy comes up to us. He's, he's like, you're going to be really great one day. And, you know, I used to help all the pro bodybuilders. I helped Arnold. I helped so-and-so. Me and yeah. my dad are like, yeah, okay. Yeah, you <laughs> thought he was a Kugelberg so probably, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, at the end of the conversation, he's like, hey, you guys should come to my house and, and you know, I'll take a look at you and, and help you out and help you take it to the next level. So me and my dad were like, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, and then I competed again and short, short as shit, he was there again. And uh, then I saw that he was talking to the judges and every, a lot of people seemed to know who this guy was. So then I became curious. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I, I did a little research on him and I found out who he was. And I was like, hey, dad, this is the guy that invited us to his house to, like, pose and help him. <laughs> so needless to say, we, we took the opportunity. We went to Bob Gruskin's house in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the story just took, like, then I just immediately regretted wanting to go there because he took us into this little basement. Yeah, right? oh, yeah. It's, it's like you think you're going into a serial killer's basement, I know. Yeah, yeah. So we go into this basement. He's got pictures of all these bodybuilders everywhere. Yeah. So I was just like, what the hell is going on? It's like some crazy dude that's And there's like this little mirror, like this little like 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 yeah. long mirror there that you can barely see yourself in, right? Yeah, yeah. So then he tells me to go through some poses and what my eating is like and all this stuff. And man, I tell you, at the end of that conversation, I felt so inspired and lucky that this guy wanted to take a look at me and help me and, and saw what I wanted to do with my career, you know, and shit, I, I would have never guessed that uh, I'd be where I'm at today. I mean, I'm nowhere near where I want to be, but I'm working my way there. And I, I, it, was, it all started with that Bob Gruskin, man. It's crazy. The, the funny thing was when I went in front of that mirror, he told me to go back to medical school. So <laughs> he said, Dave, you should really go back to medical school. I don't think you'll win your class at a, at a, at a, at a national level show. He's like, but prove me wrong. And I, and I did, and he actually came up to me years later and said, "You proved me wrong." It was, I'm very rarely, I'm very infrequently wrong, but I was wrong with you. Wow. <laughs> he was certainly right with you. The funny thing was, when I was in medical school, I actually lived around the corner from him. Didn't even know it. I did because I didn't know him at the time. I oh, was wow. really just getting into bodybuilding. I was literally, or I could have walked to his house. Had wow. I known, forget about it. I would have been there all the time. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but. Anyway, that, good story, you know, and obviously you saw a lot of uh, potential in you, and obviously you're going to the Olympia this year, and you do have a very, very good shot at, at cracking that top five. Yeah. Now, um, you know, you're probably one of the most uncelebrated guys on the pro circuit because you have two victories this year. You won two major pro shows in the Puerto Rico pro show, and obviously then you went to Toronto and won that, and you were fourth in New York. 
I mean, you're probably are having one of the best seasons of anyone out there, and, and it seems like you know everything's very quiet on the De La Rosa front. Why do you think that is? Um, I think you know it's partly my fault. It's partly the expectation of well, you know, I mean, he might not be at his best again. He's I've had a very uh, difficult time nailing my conditioning consistently. Yeah, I, you know, I had shows where I was good, and then I had shows where I was really bad. I think last year, um, you know, wasn't wasn't too good for me, obviously, going through the divorce and everything. So um, I think just people get tired of, of uh, the inconsistency, and I don't blame anybody. Um, but I will say this, it's working to my advantage. I like flying under the radar yeah. and just showing up. And, you know, like I said, my goal isn't, isn't to make anybody – I don't do this for fans. I don't do this to be popular or – I mean, you know, Dave, my father's an old school bodybuilder. Yeah. Long, long before social media, long before the magazines and, you know, where we had to wait to find out who the Mr. Olympia yeah. was. Yeah, we had to wait three are, months. That's yeah, what, yeah that's, those are the times I grew up on. Now, you know, I'm fortunate to have people that support me and want to see me do well, but it's not the reason why I do this. I do this because I want I want to be my best. I grew up, I'm, I'm, I'm a person who's living their dream. I grew up wanting to be Mr. Olympia. I remember having pictures of Nasser and Dorian and Flex and Sean Ray and, and dreaming that that was going to be me one day. And I'm actually doing that now. Um, not quite at the same level just yet, but hopefully some, at some point I will be in. And, you know, it's okay for me to, for me to think that, you know what, people don't think I'm going to do as good. That's fine. I'm going to show up and do as good as I can anyways, you know? So it's all right. After the Olympia, we'll see, uh, We'll see where I land, and I'm sure people will have plenty to celebrate them. The funny thing, though, is you're not getting to the Olympia on points. You're winning pro shows, you know, yeah. consistently. You know, every single year you seem to have, like, you know, some wins under your belt. And that that counts. I mean, how many pro wins do you have now? No, I only have three right now. I thought you had more than that, no? No, I have I have a whole bunch of second places. Oh, yeah, you did get a lot of second places. That's true. But I'm saying you, yeah. you're a very high-ranking guy who's yeah. always consistently right there. And that, you know, that, that, that goes a long way. Now, you've had some inconsistent years. Go, I don't know if you want to talk about it, but going through a divorce is always very stressful. Um, yeah. I mean, how did that affect you mentally and how, your ability to function as a bodybuilder? Well, I mean, I think just, just the, the – so I couldn't step away from bodybuilding just because it's always been something that I can go to. I think like many of us, right, like – for whatever reason we get into the gym, for me it was always like, for initially it was a way to bond with my father. We hung out at the gym, we trained together. Right. And then as I grew up and I started to have real life problems, it became my outlet. Mm. Um, so, you know, for me competing was just like, you know what, I'm not gonna stop doing something that I love to do just because I'm, I've got all this stuff going on. The problem with that is, and I think that you you probably know this better than everybody, is that there's a lot of stuff going on in your head that doesn't allow you to be, no matter what you're doing in the gym, no matter what your diet, because I can tell you, I never cheat on my diet. I never miss a cardio session. I am always in the gym busting my ass. But no matter what I did, my body just wasn't responding the way I needed it to mm -hmm. respond. And it's because I wasn't sleeping at night. There was... Oh. Stress, stress was through the roof. My cortisol levels were through the roof. I mean, when I when I tell you there were some days going into last season, like right before the book before the New York Pro, I, I thought I looked great, and then eight hours later, it looked like I had eaten pizza for like the 24 hours before. And that wasn't <laughs> the case at all. I just became a water buffalo, and that's honestly here's here's the reason behind that. The New York Pro last year was the first time that my ex-wife wasn't going to be in the stage, you know, in the stands looking at me. And for whatever reason, I got it in my head that, holy shit, she's not going to be there for the first time. And it, I just kept harping on it, harping on right. it. And then when I woke up the next morning, I was just like huge and blown out. And I, you know, it was just, so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it was, was that, the, was the breakup very t difficult for you emotionally? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would, came out of left field i didn't i didn't expect it i didn't um there wasn't any indication as to uh why things happened the way they happened but you know people grow apart i i, mm -hmm. I still um have nothing but love for my ex-wife i wish her the best and you know the thing is is that i have to 
I had to pick myself up and, and move on with my life. And that was part of moving to Florida and just starting starting new again. And I think it was the best thing. I mean, look, I was able to really focus on uh, what makes John happy again. I, I think my a lot of my identity got caught up in being a good husband and providing and giving this woman the best life that I could. Um, and I think a little bit of that kind of a little bit of what made me happy and worrying about myself kind of got pushed back. Gotcha. Um, which is normal and, it, and it's fine. But uh, now I'm, I'm back to a place where, you know, I'm doing what I need to do for me. And and I don't have many other concerns except being my, the best bodybuilder that I can be. Do you think that reduction in stress definitely has translated into a better look for your body? Because evidently you must manifest a lot of your stress through your body because when that ha when you seem to be stressed and you don't sleep and something like that that's when yeah. all of a sudden your conditioning disappears yeah yeah and that and it could be for several reasons chris will tell you this you know with, with the years that we work together i worry about you know how i'm going to look on stage and just things that i shouldn't really need to worry about i just need to focus on getting right. to the stage but you know uh everybody that knows me knows i'm a big teddy bear i'm a softy i got a big heart and yeah. you know my my divorce really took a toll on me on all areas of my life, forget, I mean, bodybuilding was just the, the, the small end of it. I mean, it, it, it really, it really messed me up for a long time, but you know, things happen and, and I'm in a much better place now. I'm super happy with the way the season went, obviously. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm just, I can't wait to get to the Olympia and, uh, take advantage of the opportunity that not just myself, but all of us have going into this Olympia. You know, it's unfortunate that the things have happened um, within our sport that aren't allowing some of the best guys to compete. But um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take full advantage of, of that and and try and place as high as I can, so that way I can get in front of the right eyes and and take those opportunities that come of it. Right and continue to grow my business and whatever else. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and in reality, it's just Sean Roden that's not really in there. I mean, you, people say, yeah. talking about Big Ramy, Big Ramy didn't compete this year, so he doesn't deserve to be on the Olympia stage, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Phil has decided not to compete, and, we, you know, Kai is Kai, you know, and so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're only missing one person, really, in, in yeah. reality, that, that, that yeah. couldn't do well, it. As because a, As a bodybuilding fan, it just sucks that some of the best bodies in the world... Yeah. For whatever reason, aren't going to be there. Right. Yeah, I think you know, as a fan, I, you're correct. For you yeah, as a competitor, yeah. I'd be licking my chops if I were you. Oh yeah. Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. As a competitor, <laughs> I'm like, yes, you sit it out. Go ahead. Now, <laughs> more money in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, John, you did something very controversial because after your your win in Toronto, you decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to get a. I have a hernia. I'm going to get a hernia fixed. Yeah. Um, a lot of guys wouldn't do that, right? But you know, because you still had, you know, the show was within three months at that point. But you said you were going to get. Why did you make that decision to do it then? Well, again, you know, once I made it into the Olympia, I, I want to take full advantage of that opportunity. And I realized, okay, I had about, uh, I think it was about two weeks that I had uh, Neil and I had sat down and we said, okay, we're going to take two weeks off of the gym and two weeks of our diet and. And just kind of relax, let my body relax and kind of normalize. And then uh, we had spoken about getting the hernia fixed. And he said, well, it depends on how fast you can heal up. And I said, well, let me go to the doctor. I'll, I'll get a, a, a pre-op you know, appointment and, and see what he says. And the doctor said that the, the uh, hernia wasn't too bad, but I should have trained for four weeks. As soon as he said that, I was kind of like, that's never going to happen. Yeah. Um, but you know, realistically, if I did rest and, and, and do everything po is possible to recover as quickly as possible, what do you think? And he's like, well, I wouldn't do it in four weeks, but if you're really careful, maybe take two weeks. So I said, perfect. Uh, but then he wanted me to go under and, and get all these tests to make sure that I was okay with going under, under anesthesia and all this stuff. I was like, look, doc, we can't do it. I need to be, I need to get in there as quickly as possible. So <laughs> let's get we scheduled the surgery you're, two days I want to stop you for a second. You're a complete psychopath because I don't know anyone who's done hernia surgery under local anesthesia. But again, tell the story. <laughs> well, you got you to gotta remember. I, I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm all in for the Olympia. And I don't, I don't want to give any judge or anybody the, the, a reason to say, oh, well, his belly button doesn't look so good. It yeah. throws off his physique. So, you know, I'm all in. And, and I said, okay, well, I'm not, I don't have time to go get, you know, all these checks and blood work and this, let's go into local anesthesia and let's just get it done. And he was kind of like, 
dude, are you sure? I was like, <laughs> yeah, you're let's a psycho. just get in there and do it. So uh, it was actually interesting. You know, a lot of people know that I went to school for nursing and um, blood and stuff like that doesn't really like eke me out. I just, I, I was more interested in it until he actually pulled my umbilicus out. That's when I was like, oh, whoa. <laughs> so wait, so l l tell it. So they numb you up with, with, with lid no, lidocaine and probably Narcan and stuff like that. Yeah. And then they cut what the right right above the belly button, right? They, no, they cut in the inside of the belly button. Okay. And what he did was he, you know, they, they take everything, they pull everything apart so they can see what's going on. Sure. My my umbilicus, which is the tube that they cut when you're born. Yeah. It's your umbilical cord. Uh, my umbilicus was just free floating. It was completely detached. Okay. So he went in there and pulled it out, and I was like. That's when I was like, okay, I need something to calm my nerves. <laughs> oh, no. So you, yeah, they didn't even give you like a Valium or something like that? that they did after that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, so when the they pull it out, what do they do with it? Uh, they, he, he had to put it back in and stitch it in into, oh. into, the, uh, in, into the abdominal wall. Gotcha. So that's what they did. Um, basically, but when we started the surgery, I, I got to tell people that I was very interested in what he was doing. And. He saw that I was interested, so he actually put a, a mirror so I could watch what was going on. And that's why I said when he pulled that umbilicus out and I could actually see down into my gut, <laughs> I was like, oh, man, this is too much. Yeah, yeah. So, so, all right, so yeah. he, he, he gives you a value and you calm down a little bit. He's like, I'm going to finish. The, I'm going to keep going with the surgery. Now, how do they stitch the, the hole in your umbilicus together? What, did they put mesh in there? What did they do? No, no mesh. So it took about six stitches uh, to, to sew up the hernia, which is the tear of the, the yeah. abdominal wall. And then he, he stitched the umbilicus around the abdominal wall as well. So now instead, if, if you look at my pictures, I always had a bit of an Audi yeah. belly button. Now it's he just recessed it back into where it normally should be and, and stitched it in, and that's it. Interesting. And, yeah. and how, what, So what was the ultimate recovery? How long did you wait before you worked out? I was in the gym 10 days after that. <laughs> I guess you, you weren't using any abdominals, uh, wall types of exercises. No, no, no. I, I, I did my best to not use my, uh, my core at all. Um, we did, when we first, I think my first workout was we did shoulders first, then I did biceps, then I did chest. I tried to do back, um, but I, I couldn't do anything with too much pressure on my stomach. Yeah. So I, you know, I did what I could. I did pull downs and things like that, but. I wasn't able to have an effective back workout. I skipped legs that week, and by the by the third weekend, I was going balls to the wall. Yeah, yeah. I, I had an umbilical hernia surgery. I I wasn't awake when I had it done, but I was two weeks. That's it too. Two weeks I was back in the gym. By the third week, I was doing legs. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, it heals yeah. pretty quickly. It's not like a it's not a major surgery or anything. By yeah, any means. yeah, it wasn't too bad at all. I mean, he he was being overly cautious by saying, "Oh, don't lift anything for four weeks." And, and you know, I told him, Doc, I'm not in there like just, you know, being reckless. I, yeah. I always try to take care of myself, but I, I can't sit out for four weeks either. Kai Green, had, I remember when Kai Green had his done, he was out of the gym for like three months or something like that. He was like, had drains in him and stuff like that, all kinds of craziness. I well, don't know yeah, why. Yeah, I think it depends on the severity of it, right? Like, yeah. so I only had a very small tear. I mean, some of these guys have huge tears. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, yeah, Phil, he Phil Heath's was was a much more uh, serious uh, surgery because yeah. he had a tear in the wall of his, uh, I think, of his rectus, uh, abdominus muscles there. Wow. Yeah. But well, I well, it obviously worked out. You, you look great. I've been, we were looking at your pictures on Instagram. I mean, you, you're you're looking big as ever. What what are you weighing? Well, right now I'm, I'm about 242 pounds. Oh wow, so that's big for you. Last time last time I competed in um, so for Puerto Rico I was about 236. Yeah. 236, 235, and then for Toronto, it was 232. Okay. So what do you think you're going to come in at the Olympia? I'd like to be around 233, 232, around there again. I think yeah. that, that kind of conditioning is what's going to help me get uh, into that top five, top six spot. I, yeah. I, I, I like my look in Puerto Rico because I was a little bit fuller. Um, but I think, you know, competing, I can't, I, I don't have the size to compete with a Roli or you know, the, the, I don't have that that kind of muscularity, but I can, you know, beat somebody like Ruli in conditioning. Yeah. So I may not get the nod and, and move ahead of him, but I think if I have that kind of conditioning, they they might 
bump me up and, and keep me closer to that pack. Absolutely. And you got good shape and good muscle bellies and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, well, John, I'm ha so happy for you that you're in a good place now in Florida, out of the cold New York winters like I am. And uh, I, I will never shovel snow again. No, I, that's what I tell people. I said, there's no, you, you, there's no, you can't shovel sunshine, I said, that's for sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, you're in a good place. Uh, you have two wins this year. Good luck at the Olympia. Uh, this could be your, your year to break that top six. And I think that that would certainly cement and validate a lot of what you've been doing in the last couple of years. Thank you, Dave. I really appreciate it. And I want to say thank you for always supporting me, you and Chris. And I feel really blessed to be, um, you know, just just loved and supported by so many people in this industry that, you know, you guys don't have to. I, I see you, you make me po you make posts about me and muscle in the morning yeah. and stuff. And it's it's just to me, man, I, I just feel maybe it's all everything that's happened in the past year. But I just feel so grateful for all the opportunities, all the people that I've come across in this sport. And, you know, I just, I feel really blessed. And I want to say thank you for, you know, always just showing me love and, and, and support. Absolutely. For the, it's for the love of the game. And like, you know, you got that love of the game. And that's why, uh, you know, you have had longevity in the sport. And I think that you're still doing it better now than even when you first started. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, actually, how old are you now? I just turned 35. Wow. I can't. Yeah. I remember when you just first started. You were so young. But you know, know what? We're all getting old. I'm. I'm. In, I'm. I can't even believe I'm in my fifties. You know. So it just it goes fast. <laughs> well, you, you, know? look, you look great. You thank, look you, great. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's my kids. I said we don't. You don't really start aging until you have kids, and then you start getting you know older. But uh, yeah. they keep me on my feet, running around, and that's what's important. But John, good luck at the Olympia, and uh, you know you keep us updated if anything happens. Yes. Thank you, Dave. All right, guys, and that's yeah. going to take us to the end of another episode of RX Muscles. Iron Road to the Olympia 2019, brought to you by Chemical Warfare. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.